What's going on, guys? Giants fans, I need your help. Give me a TV show to start watching. I just got caught up on Ozark, so I'm looking for a new show to watch. I'm re-watching Entourage, one of the best shows out there. But give me a new TV show to watch in the comment section right now. I appreciate it. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Subscribe to the channel right now if you want to be featured on the next New York Giants Now mailbag. Because the only way you're getting on screen, and I'm answering your questions if you're a subscriber, like all the real ones that subscribed already, because we're trying to get to 8,000 subscribers by the NFL Draft. So join the movement, subscribe, and drop your questions in the comment section using hashtag Giants. This first one rolling in from Skeptic. What do you think a potential trade back would look like? And what teams do you think the trade would be with? I got four teams that I think the Giants could trade back with. I think the Seattle Seahawks in pick number nine is a possibility. Same with the Se uh, New Orleans Saints, excuse me, at 16 or 19. Or the Pittsburgh Steelers at pick number 20. Or the Atlanta Falcons at pick number eight. What do all these teams have in common? Kind of like the New York Giants. They need a quarterback. Seattle, they don't want to roll with Drew Locke. The Saints, is Jameis Winston really the answer? Is Mitch Trupitsky the answer in Pittsburgh? And Marcus Mariota, I don't think he's the guy in Atlanta. I honestly, if we traded back from five or seven, I would want their first round pick next this year. I would want a first round pick next year, maybe a third rounder this year, and a fourth rounder next year. Very similar to the Katarius Tony trade. These are my four trade back landing spots. But let me know about this one. Do you want the Giants to trade down? in round one or do you want them to stick at five and seven and take two of the top seven players in this draft it's something to think about i think i lean towards trading back so you can get ammunition to move up in next year's draft if you need to but type y for yes or n for no on where you stand on this topic my guy alzo what's good bro probably the most faithful giants now viewer i appreciate you it seems that at least three to four teams at the moment have multiple first round picks in 2023 if the giants were able to obtain another one what are the chances of actually landing a QB as the competition would be fierce? Go Giants. You're 100% right. And I think it's going to be hard to go get one of the QBs next year because you got C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. And I don't want to bet my life savings on it, but I think they go number one and number two in the 2023 NFL Draft. So I like the idea of trading back this year. So next year you have the draft capital get up into the first one or two picks. Maybe, you know, uh, Arizona State kid, Oklahoma quarterback – Spencer Rattler, excuse me, shout out to producer Jack, the name escaped me. Maybe he pops off again this year. I mean, last year at this time, he was projected to be the number one QB in 2022, but it didn't work out at Oklahoma. So maybe those are going to be the three top QBs in that draft class. It's going to take a lot. How likely? I don't know. I think you're going to have to pick in the top two to get either Young or Stroud. Appreciate your question, Alzo. If you want to be a real one like my guy Alzo, go down and hit that big red button right now because, look, it's free daily videos around the latest Giants news and rumors. And I am here to tell you right now, we are going to be going live for the NFL draft picks five and seven. And you're not going to want to miss that. So subscribe and turn your notifications on. So when you get the notice that we're going live, you can join the party and we can start throwing back shots when the Giants make their first pick. Anthony Raza, if Tyler Linderbaum drops out of the first round and is available to us in the second, do we take him? I can only say yes in two languages. But if I could say it in 100, I would do it. Yes and see, absolutely. If Tyler Linderbaum is there in the second round, say he's he's there at pick 33, I kind of would want the Giants to trade up to go get him, to make sure they go and get their guy. He used to be a top 10 draft prospect, but then he fell back in the process because centers just don't usually go that high. But this is one of the best interior offensive linemen to enter the draft in recent memory. This is a stud at the Giants get him. I'd be really, really happy. Appreciate it, Anthony. Next one coming in from Marcos. Who is the most underrated person in the draft the Giants can pick at number five or number seven? Also, again, love your vids. Marcos, come on, dude. You're going to make me cry. Relax. I appreciate all your love. I always see you in the comments section. I love it. I love it. I love you, brother. Some first-round sleepers, I guess, at five and seven. You're not really going to get a sleeper. But some guys that haven't really been mentioned to the Giants, what about Garrett Wilson? He's my number one wide receiver in this draft. He kind of gives me OBJ light 
vibes. He's not as good after the catch with OBJ, but he has the same body control, the same strong hands, and the ability to catch the ball away from his body like Odell Beckham does. I like Trevor Penny, the right tackle at a university in Northern Iowa. He is going to be a plug-and-play guy and one of the best run blockers in the National Football League day one when he steps onto the turf. And honestly, I don't think the Giants should or will draft him with pick number five or seven, but I believe me, Malik Willis is going to be a big-time player in the National Football League. I don't think he plays his rookie year, but year two, if if it's the Detroit Lions that pick him or the Pittsburgh Steelers or the New Orleans Saints, if they can build an offense around him, I think he's going to pop in the NFL. Those are three guys that I think would be sleeper picks at five or at seven. Skyler Sanford S. Appreciate you, Brody. What are the two best possible situations for the first round? I'm guessing you're asking how would be the best way if the Giants picked five or seven. Honestly, you got to go off at the tackle at five. If you can get Ika McQuanu or Evan Neal at five, I think that's a home run pick. Then pick seven, I think you can go best player available. I think you can get a guy like Kyle Hamilton or Sauce Gardner or Kayvon Thibodeau. So I think those are the best case scenarios. Get the offensive tackle at five and then get a defensive playmaker like Thibodeau or Sauce Gardner or Kyle Hamilton at number seven. Those two, if the first round ended like that, that's a home run for Joe Shane and the New York Giants. But what is your perfect dream outcome for the first round of the New York Giants draft with pick five and number seven. Comment it for me. Let me know who you're taking at five and you're taking at seven. I appreciate everyone that always answers these questions because they help us out. And people are always asking me, yo, Marsh, how can I support? It's by answering these questions in the comment section. Sterling Shepherd, little brother. Um, is there another Sterling Shepherd I'm missing? Because that's not how Sterling Shepherd spells his name. I'm looking at my guy, producer Jack. But Sterling, little bro, is Kobe Bryant a good value pick for us in the third or fourth round? Kobe, I like him a lot. Long, lanky corner out of Cincinnati. He lacks a little bit of foot speed compared to a guy like Sauce Gardner. He's, honestly, I think he's more of a fourth or fifth round guy. Would I like the Giants to draft him? Yes, because he fits what Wink Martindale does. He likes to press. He likes to get his hands on players. He's a physical cornerback. I like him a lot. And Sterling, you got another question for me. What about this one? Is Andrew Thomas a sleeper trade candidate to the Raiders for a future first round pick? We're just going to go straight to the question for you guys because uh, I want to know what you have to say about this one. Should the Giants trade Andrew Thomas type Y for no or type N for hell no? Sterling Shep, little bro, the Giants ain't trading Andrew Thomas. So no, I don't I don't think they trade him. Not a chance. Type Y for no. Yes, I yes, I said that right. Type Y for no. Type N for hell no. V Rock. In my opinion, Giants first three picks should be best player on the board for the most needed position on the team. I see an O line, edge, and then corner. What's your top three position choices this team must address first? O line at pick number five. I'm down with an edge rusher at pick seven. And I think if you go edge and O line in round one. I think corner in round three is the way to go. Can you get a guy like Kyer Elam at pick 36? Or maybe Roger McCreary at pick 36? I also, I think corner is a big need, but safety, it's like corner and then like safety right here. I really like Jalen Petrie out of Baylor a lot. He is Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger 2.0. But I agree with you, V-Rock. O-line, edge, and then corner. Appreciate your question, bro. V-Rock, I don't know if you have, but if you haven't, go give us a follow on Rumble. And you're like, yo, Marsh, what's Rumble? It's a very similar app to YouTube. It's a content creator video app, and we're on it. And we're posting our content on it. And as you can see right here, we're beating the Cowboys. And let's keep that up, because Tom Downey, our Cowboys report, he's on me every day. Marsh, we're on your tail. And I'm like, Tom, piss off. You're not catching us. Let's lengthen the lead. Let's get to 2,000 followers. Rumble.com slash TV. And another awesome thing about Rumble it's, all, it's a lot like a podcast. You can close out the app, put the phone in the pocket, and the audio will continue to play unlike YouTube. YouTube, you close the app, you turn me off. Maybe you want to do that, but on Rumble, you can go on your run and listen to Marshall Green break down Giants news and rumors. So give us a follow, rumble.com slash TV. CJ Mario, Marario, uh, I'm probably butchering that name, I'm sorry. Marrero, CJ Marrero, let me know how to say your name in the comments section because I always see it down there. Should the Giants go for a safety in the draft? I think you got to go draft a safety. The only ones on the roster right now are Xavier McKinney and Julian Love. Jabril Peppers, he's out. Logan Ryan, he's out. So a safety for sure I think needs to be the Giants 
a Giants pick. I think maybe in round three, around four. I said I like Jalen Petrie a lot. If he's there at 36, I'd be down for the Giants taking Petrie. I also like Brisker, and there's other guys I like as well. But Petrie, he's my go-to guy if he's there at 36. Tyler Hathaway, student. Do you have a non-student account? But Tyler, appreciate your question, bro. Who do you think is going to be the X Factor this season for the Giants? Honestly, I think it's going to be Kenny Galladay. I think Kenny Galladay has a bounce back year with the New York football Giants. I think he's, Brian Dable is going to scheme ways to get him open and build the passing game around Kenny Galladay. If, we saw, if you go back and look at the numbers that what Stephon Diggs did in his time in Minneapolis, when people thought he was the number two wide receiver behind Adam Thielen, he went to Buffalo and had his best career or best year of his career, excuse me. And that's because of Brian Dable. Brian Dable is the anti Jason Garrett. He puts players in position to succeed. And I think Kenny Galladay will do that this year for the Giants. Excuse me. Caesar, uh, I, Lil Isle, 333, Caesar. Any day three edge rushers you're looking at? I like Jesse Lucchetta and Carson Wells. Those are two guys I've looked at, and I, I like them a lot. But a day three sleeper edge rusher that I like is D'Angelo Malone out of Western Kentucky. Six foot four, 240 pounds. I think he's your prototypical 3 4 outside linebacker. He's got a quick first step. He's got to improve on his hand placement a little bit. That's why he's a day three guy. But 94 tackles, nine sacks last year, four forced fumbles. When you get to day three, it's all about going after the best player available and people that have upside. And I think Malone fits that bill exactly. And I think in a Wink Martindale system, he could be someone that pops at the next level. I appreciate everyone that's made New York Giants now a part of their day today. And look, if I didn't get to your question, shame on me. But you can always hit me up on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. And I'm always down to chop it up in the DMs. And you can always send me questions to be featured on Mailbags on Twitter. So give me a follow at Marshall Green and send me a DM with any Giants question you got and we could chop it up all day long.